Welcome everyone to the second module of Lecture 1 in Legal and Professional Skills. So today's, uh, or this part, this module, I'm sorry, is on practical legal training and admission as a legal practitioner. So when we um, first of all start thinking about PLT, why do you need to do it, I suppose is an obvious question. Um, and we're going to be looking in this module as how you actually become admitted as an Australian legal practitioner, the requirements of you in that role, both from within the profession and externally of the profession. So first of all, let's talk about why you as students are undertaking PLT. Well, it is um, a requirement for anyone who has undertaken a law degree to satisfactorily complete PLT as a prerequisite to be able to obtain a compliance certificate from the Legal Prof Profession Admission Board, otherwise known as the LPAB. That compliance certificate is in fact um, issued under the Uniform Law and is your way of becoming admitted as a lawyer. So of course those of you who are doing PLT, um, the ultimate goal is to be admitted as an Australian legal practitioner. That doesn't mean that all of you will practice as a lawyer. Some of you may have formed the view that you've completed a law degree. You may as well round off um, your learning um, and become admitted as a legal practitioner, even though you may not envisage in the near future working as a lawyer, but rather you might be using your legal skills in some other professional capacity. It's not uncommon, for example, that people are admitted, but then they go into um, in-house counsel roles or they might go into business, but they still maintain um, their practicing certificate, albeit there will be restrictions on that certificate. The important thing for you to remember as you are undertaking this subject of legal and professional skills and the other two PLT subjects, namely litigation and estate practice and transactional practice, is that it's actually very difficult different to your core and elective subjects already undertaken. It is, as I said in Module 1, the transition of um, applying that legal knowledge that you've acquired over the years into practical scenarios. And it can, for many students, be not only different, but also challenging skills to acquire. It's important that you gain an understanding that PLT is really bringing all that knowledge and those skills together. The law is no longer compartmentalised as we learn um, the law through university. So in practice, even though I may, for example, be dealing with a family law matter, um, my area of expertise is family law, inevitably I will have to deal with um, issues relating to estates, um, transactional matters, including my knowledge of what happens on a mortgage transaction or a conveyance transaction, trusts and other areas of law, company structures that um, impact on the particular legal problem that the client is seeing me about. But also what I'd like you to take away from this is that the skills that you learn in this subject particularly are transferable not only amongst the other PLT subjects, but importantly, in whatever professional capacity you may um, be undertaking in the future. So how you engage with the public generally um, is important. How you write letters, communicate effectively, problem solve, even though they are certainly specific to lawyers, they are applicable to you in whatever role you may undertake in the future. The Legal Profession Admission Board is a statutory corporation and it's the body that administers um, all matters associated with the admission of Australian legal practitioners. And what you um, are going to be learning in the PLT subjects here at UTS are the uh, requirements or the competencies that are determined by the LPAB. So whilst I might think it's very important for you to learn how to draft in plain language and learn how to negotiate and to interview clients appropriately and to be an effective communicator, it's not just Jackie Jones saying that it's important, but in fact it is the guidelines set by the LPAB saying that all students must tick off all of these competencies if they want to be admitted as a legal practitioner. 
and one of those um, is for example the um, area of ethics. It is as I said in module one um, an area that is not just a tick for a subject and is never considered again and certainly the LPAB acknowledges and um, is mindful of the importance of all ethical aspects. So what is the actual process to admission? Well you are, have a or will very shortly have attained academic qualifications. So you may have done law as an undergraduate or you may have done your law degree in a postgraduate capacity. That you have satisfactorily completed the specified PLT prerequisites, namely the competencies as set out by the LPAB in a PLT program. That you are a fit and proper person to be admitted. Um, there are documents that are required to be submitted to evidence that aspect. You are to take an oath or to make an affirmation of office and it is that once you are admitted you are in fact an officer of the court and this is something that as we work through the PLT program particularly in this subject is coming to an awareness of what does an officer of the court mean. It's an unusual profession in that it's the only profession I can really think of that our duty is um, foremost and the highest to the court rather than to our client. Sometimes students struggle with that concept and hopefully after we have finished this subject you'll have a greater appreciation and understanding of what that actually means and entails. And so after those four steps have been um, completed and undertaken, you will then be admitted as an Australian legal practitioner. It's a ceremony that takes place in the Supreme Court of New South Wales. You are um, admitted as a legal practitioner in that court and your duty is in fact to the court. So it's a lovely ceremony, um, um, not just for you but for all of those family and friends that have supported you through your years of study. Um, Bearing in mind that law is a difficult degree, it is challenging. I'm sure there are periods of time when you've all um, been in some aspect of despair, whether it's over constitutional law, real property, equity, um, any area that you've had to struggle with concepts that can be quite difficult and foreign to us at times. There is a warning though, and I, um, I don't say this lightly, um, and that is all about student conduct and you are required to provide relevant official reports if you've ever been the subject of disciplinary action. And slide eight has what the meaning of disciplinary action relates to, including a warning or reprimand. Now, the warning that I want to um, stress here to you is clearly linked to copying and cheating with regard to work that is submitted. It is uh, not uncommon that we find students try to copy work that has been submitted by students in previous semesters. Uh, usually something will not be copied correctly, uh, whether it's the name, whether it's an address, whether it is some aspect that it is a clear indicator that it's not your work. It also is quite telling that a student who might submit one assessment task um, and clearly um, is having difficulty or isn't addressing matters in a, in a way that um, is uh, evidence of their understanding of a point and then the next assessment task um, has a totally different character tone um, and general uh, presence presentation um, will ring alarm bells. I can't stress it enough, it is to be your own work. You are about to um, and very soon be uh, admitted as legal practitioners. It comes with a responsibility um, and I for one um, find it astounding that any law student who is embracing law and who is wanting to be admitted as a legal practitioner and hold themselves out as such would embark on a process such as uh, cheating using other people's work. That doesn't mean that you don't collaborate. Um, certainly that's what we do in practice where you will work with fellow practitioners, um, unpack ideas, discuss, 
work through, challenge, talk about, particularly with assessments. What did you think of this? What is, how does this work? This is where I'm coming from. All that's really healthy to be encouraged and part of teamwork. Um, but what happens after you've had that collaboration, that unpacking, that debriefing, you then need to go away and write up and complete the assessment task or the work um, on your own um, volition and not copy somebody else's. So take the warning, please don't treat it lightly. Um, people do get referred for misconduct and it can have serious ramifications for you and you are so close to the end of your studies um, and to be admitted. So moving on from that lecture about um, making sure you do your own work, let's have a chat about are you ready to be a lawyer? So Because hopefully those of you who are listening are in fact um, wanting to go down that path. Studying law is very different to being a lawyer and I, I certainly remember my early days of being a, a young graduate um, and being absolutely um, gobsmacked as to how I deal with a client, how do I respond to matters, even trying to identify what the legal problem was. I did a clerkship at Allen's and I remember being given a problem and sitting there looking at it for some time, trying to even get my head around what particular area of law I should even have been trying to consider that the problem fell within. So practicing, yes, is very different and it's that non-compartmentalisation that I was talking about before that we need to understand. So um, we do have professional standards and there, there certainly is expectations of how we as lawyers are going to, to undertake and act, not just ourselves but also by others who uh, deal with us. So slide 10 talks about the requirements under the legal profession uniform admission rules to become admitted. So um, just have a, a look at aspect there. There's a quote on... Um, uh, slide 11 from the Council of the Law Society of New South Wales back in 1994 and I actually think it sums up um, really what it is all about to be a lawyer. The lawyer, the law should protect the rights and freedom of members of the community, the administration of the law should be just. The lawyer practices law as an officer of the court. The lawyer's role is to both to uphold the rule of law and serve the community in the administration of justice. Sometimes that can be a challenging aspect. A number of you may be considering going to the bar. Um, there are a number of prerequisites for practicing the bar in New South Wales and they are as set out on slide 12. Um, the bar is, um, an air, is, is, is part of our legal system where those who are at the bar uh, specialise in advocacy, specialise in the actual um, rule of law and uh, the adversarial approach to dealing with problem solving. The Legal Profession Uniform Admission Rules, it's a bit of a mouthful, isn't it? That came into force um, this year, 2015. Um, and Schedule 2 of the rules set out the prescribed competencies. Those of you who have a little bit of spare time over Christmas might want to go and have a look at it. But just wanting you to put in context as to why you are doing the subjects you are doing in the PLT program at UTS and why you are doing the topics that are part of those subjects. And so you can see... Um, that it is the LPOB that requires you to have an understanding of problem solving, um, business skills, for example, um, civil litigation, which you will do in uh, litigation and estate practice, as well as um, an optional area of family law, wills and estate and criminal. And here at UTS in the summer program, if those of you who are doing litigation and estate practice, you will in fact do wills and the family component. So the uniform um, framework came in on the 1st of July. You'll see that there is um, an Act in New South Wales and there are a lot of rules that have been made by the Legal Services Council. 
please um, become familiar with that legislation and the rules. Um, in particular, there is the Uniform Solicitor's Conduct Rules, the Professional Development Rules, and there's also the General Rules that are very important. We will refer to these during um, a number of the modules in this subject. Um, the previous Solicitor's Conduct Rules are no longer applicable and you need to be mindful of the uniform uh, legislation and rules. Finally on this module, um, just a little bit of a snapshot on slide 15 with regard to the legislation that's just a visual guide for you so that you can um, come to grips with actually what it is that applies in this aspect. So that's the end of module 2 of lecture 1. Thank you.